say how I feel Cause I know that it's something real Gonna say how I feel Cause I know that it's something real Hey hey Gonna say how I feel Cause I know that it's something real everybody how are you guys tonight <laughs> wiener dogs no i didn't have wiener dogs that's part of the story tonight our neighbors had them um yes they were really interesting little, little things they they yeah <laughs> it was kind of funny but um hi tamara's here and angie used to have a wiener dog she says um Angie, I caught the very tail end of you were just signing off when I saw that you were at, I had just finished dinner. I had an early, late lunch, early dinner. Yeah, forgot, kind of forgot lunch today. Um, go back and see what it was. But it tilted out and it called up, sailed up beautifully. Yay, I want to go back and see. There's Dee and Tamara. Um... I would, <laughs> that did come off. I would buy the eighteen for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, Julia Lee is here. Oh, I have to locate a pair of readers. Oh my goodness. Um, and Dee's has checking in with everybody. Hope you're feeling better, Deidre. I, definitely. Um, let me call it that uh angie please there we go gail you had me a dachshund picture <laughs> gail thank you for the email today i really appreciated it um and there karen peabody hi to tuck myself on my way to tuck yourself in well this is tuck yourself in time um you bet and angie let's see everybody else is saying hi to each other and all those oh Aldo has a big giant bone down here that he brought. It's bigger than him, practically, you know. But he's been sitting out on the deck. We It was 71 degrees and raining about 10 minutes ago. So um, anyway, there we go. Checking in, making sure I don't miss anybody. Going. <laughs> You keep from going to the garage to smoke and you forgot you quit two days ago. Oh, well, congratulations on quitting. Good job. Now you just like have to put your paint pouring out in the garage or something. So when you go out there, you find something else to do. Yay. Candy Cane. Okay. I had a girlfriend in high school named Candy Cane. Yes, that was her name. Red hair, redder than mine. Really curly. Um, and her name was Valerie Candace Kane. And we... But nobody knew her first name was really Valerie. It was all candy. Yes, yes. Janice. Janice is here. Yay. Good to check in. Okay. Oh, there's Larry. And them all going. Larry, are you guys doing Sunday this week, month? I mean, this week, is this your Sunday um, Crunchberry extravaganza? <laughs> uh, ten dachshunds in total. Oh. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that's crazy. And Helen, there we go. Yes. And Nathan, the fine art of distraction. So that means my down under folks are in the house. And Helen, my neighbor from no, up north on an island. And Larry, my neighbor from across the sound is here. Um, love dogs. And... There we go. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You guys have just been going crazy. 
Um, anyway, so, um, <laughs> you saw me, I could not believe it. I was like going through and I just finished and I thought I was going to boom, boom, boom. And there was you and there was India and there was, oh my gosh. And there was Christina Welch and I'd missed hers completely. <sighs> so, oh, well things to do. And, um, today I had to go up to the, uh, civic center and put away some of the art stuff from that art thing I did before I left on vacation because it was all in the grandkids room and they're coming tomorrow and I kind of needed room for them. And, uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah. So today, all right, let's see if this will work. I, okay, there it is. All right. So last night, you guys, this is not much to see. Um, I did this and I, oh, it's got a little bit of a reflection, but there Larry said to frame it. Get up there, camera, get up a little higher so people can see. There we go. It's got a bit of a reflection from the camera up above, but I did, I stuffed it in a frame. I have 8,000 frames out in this shed. So I did that and that's kind of, I added this purple, I added some more of this brush into it. So that, is my rendition of the, the photograph right there. And then I finally have my sketchbook here so I can show you the other two that I've done. And I think I showed you these once before of what I did them before when I did them. I'm, they're there. There. And so this was one that I did and this one I think I did in crayon. Yes, this one I did in crayon and then rubbing and some colored pencil, I think. So that was one idea of trying to do it. So it needs to be cropped off there. And then I did it in watercolor. So these I had done quite some time ago, probably a month ago. And then this is the photo in collage, which is a very different effect. I'm going to do some more collages. I kind of like it. So yeah, that was last night's adventure. Fun, fun, huh? You guys got me going on that for sure. So for tonight, um, the collage continues with the collage of Ezra Jack Keats books and Tonight, I take you back to his character of Peter, the little boy from the snowy day. And um, Peter has a couple, of, a couple of short books that, well, he has a whole bunch. Peter's chair, and uh, that's about when he gets a new sister and all the things of his get painted pink. He has issues with that. Um, and then there's, but there's two that I have. One and one is called A Whistle for Willie, and um, that's where the dachshund comes in. You get to meet Willie, and then another one is called A Letter for Amy. And I chose these two because of the art in them and the way that he did collage again. And I think it'll be fun to see um, how Ezra Jack Keats continued to progress in his use of collage. So that's what I have for us tonight. I get my book over here in front of me. Yay. There we go. So I hope you are all ready. Whoops. What's going on? There we go. Um, cracker me up. Yes. Angie is a cracker me up person that turned out beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you. I kind of, I kind of like it. It's very, it's very different and it's far, um, far more bold than the watercolor stuff, but it's a little more accurate to colors than I saw as I saw in mobile. Um, that's in, in, um, in Moab. So I'm kind of pleased with it for my first shot at a collage, all collage like that of a photograph that I've done. Ooh, now I think I'm going to have to do that one. That's staring at me. I have a photograph that stares at me. Hang on just a second. Let's see if I can show it to you. Um, 
Um, go to this and go to, oh, there she is. And, but we're going to go to, um, there and, oops, I'm upside down. Do not dis okay. Whoops, not that. No, I didn't want to do the guide. Hang on, you guys. I'm trying to show you stuff and it's going all wackadoo. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to open shoot. There we go. And um turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Okay. Well, fiddle. Hang on, give me a minute here. It will turn, won't it? Come on, do the camera. Let's see, try it here. It's not there. Well, fiddle. Well, I'll just do the other thing. There we go. Okay, there, now I can show it to you. But you kind of can't see very well. I'll have to hold it still. All right, so this, the, I just saw this, and this gave me an idea to do, whoa, now it's crooked. Why are you doing it that way? Well, you're going to be upside down. Oh, okay. There, that photograph that I have right there, that is of Zabriskie Point in Death Valley. So that might be my next collage effort because it has cool lines and colors. It would be a fun one to do. Maybe so. Okay. What do you think? Think I can do that one? That's my next challenge to myself. All right. And so if any of you guys are doing collages or anything like that, send them to me. I will pull them up for tomorrow night's show. And I froze myself. Uh-oh. And we go to air pad. There we go. There we go. Come on. What happened? Undo, redo. Oh, there. And we need size. Oh, I know what it's doing. We need to, it's on tall, wide. There we go. Picture my mom and we'll go back to, not that. Oh, I'm off all the wackadoos tonight. You guys just talk amongst yourselves because I'm wackadoo here. I froze myself on that one, which is really weird. Okay. And I am gonna go here. That's me. This needs to be, I'm talking to myself. There we go. Breathe, as Deidre always says, breathe. Okay, so here is Whistle for Willie. Now that I'm not distracted by what I'm gonna do for my next collage piece. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? I think, um, I think I, rows here. So I'm going to do something here and switch to FaceTime camera. Yep. There. I did freeze. How weird is that? Hmm. So Whistle for Willie is by Ezra, Ezra Jack Keats. And this is where Peter comes back into play in the stories. Uh, the little boy from uh, Snowy Day. And... This one was written in 1964. So Snowy Day was 1962. A Whistle for Willie came in 1964. And there's Peter. Oh, how Peter wished he could whistle.
Look at the collage work that he did and combined with paint and everything. He saw a boy playing with his dog. Whenever the boy whistled, the dog ran straight to him. Peter tried and tried to whistle, but he couldn't. So instead he began to turn himself around. Around and around he whirled, faster and faster. And when he stopped, everything turned down and up and up and down and around and around. Oh. Peter saw his dog, Willie, coming. Quick as a wink, he hid in an empty carton lying on the sidewalk. Wouldn't it be funny if I whistled, Peter thought. Willie would stop and look all around to see who it was. Peter tried again to whistle, but he couldn't. So Willie just walked on. Peter got out of the carton and started home. On the way, he took some colored chalks out of his pocket and drew a long, long line. Right up to his door. He stood there and tried to whistle again. He blew till his cheeks were tired, but nothing happened. He went into his house and put on his father's old hat to make himself feel more grown up. He looked into the mirror to practice whistling. Still no whistle. Hmm. When his mother saw what he was doing, Peter pretended that he was his father. He said, I've come home early today, dear. Is Peter home? His mother answered, Why, no, he's outside with Willie. Well, I'll go out and look for them, said Peter. First, he walked along a crack in the sidewalk. Then he tried to run away from his shadows. Look at that cool background. He jumped off his shadow, but then he landed. But when he landed, they were together again. He came to the corner where the carton was, and who should he see but Willie? Peter scrambled under the carton. He blew and he blew and he blew, and suddenly out came a real whistle. Willie stopped and looked around to see who it was. It's me, Peter shouted and stood up. And Willie raced straight to him. Peter ran home to show his father and mother what he could do. They loved Peter's whistling. And so did Willie. Oops. What happened to the pages? Hang on, a page froze again. There we go. There it is. Yes, there. And so did Willie. Peter's mother asked him and Willie to go on an errand to the grocery store. He whistled all the way there, and he whistled all the way home, and he was very happy. You remember the first time you learned to whistle? Man, what an accomplishment it was. But look at this cool way the background is put together in collage. And this one paper that is Peter's shirt all along that kind of scribble like. And in the background on this page, it's just like really clear pieces, light pieces of paper or um, water washes of watercolor in light, but still very much like a collage. And this page. All the arrows and the stamps. Looks like he just had stamps and did stuff. This is that background makes it cool like a wallpaper. It's just that tiny little bit of texture that you can barely see. 
and it just makes it so cool. I love to see how he's done that. Okay, so the next book I'm going to do, let's see what you guys thought. Let's see, a long day. Oh, long day to Seattle, yes. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you can collage, Angie, with anything. Uh, paper, um, you can collage. Newspapers. People will use newspapers a lot and old books. And um, uh, if you have pieces of fabric or you have an uh, old shirt that you're going to tear up or something like that, you can find stuff like that. Um, there's also, you can use leaves and um, things from nature. All, all, you know, all kinds of flowers and stuff like that. Twigs, sand in on stuff. Uh, just add it in with the glue and make it kind of stick it in there. Oh, there's, there's not any really anything that you can't use in a collage. So I love this. Like, look at there's, look at on this page I have to show you guys. Look at, there's like a fluid art piece right back here in the back, right behind the barbershop thing. See that? Isn't that cool? 1964 fluid art, folks. Whoa. Okay, now let's get to the other book. Close that one up and I will bring the other one. Now the other one, oops, that's that. There it is. A letter to Amy. I thought I had it. So this is a, a different one. It has a little bit different color scheme to it than the bright one. Um, it has, it's, Peter has, he's going to write a letter to Amy and for a reason. And there's, a, there's rain. And so you get that whole different kind of aspect to it. It's a fun little book too. This one came, A Letter to Amy. And it says on the back of the envelope, it is this Saturday. <laughs> U.S. mail. Use zip code numbers. Mail early in the day. Let's see, when was this one? Did it, I didn't, oh, it doesn't have a copyright page on it up front. Hmm. I'm writing a letter to Amy. I'm inviting her to my party, Peter announced. Why don't you just ask her? You didn't write to anyone else, said his mother. Peter stared at the sheet of paper for a while and said, Well, this is sort of special. He folded the letter quite a few times, put it in the envelope and sealed it. Now I'll mail it, he said. What did you write? His mother asked. Will you please come to my birthday party, Peter? You should tell her when to come. So he wrote on the back of the envelope, It is this Saturday at 2. Now I'll mail it. Put a stamp on it. He did and started to leave. Wear your raincoat. It looks like rain. He put it on and said, It looks like rain. You'd better stay in, Willie. And ran out to mail his letter. Walking to the mailbox, Peter looked at the sky. Dark clouds raced across it like wild horses. He glanced up at Amy's window. She wasn't there. Only Pepe, her parrot, sat peering down. Willie, didn't I tell you to stay home? Peter thought, what will the boys say when they see a girl at my party? Suddenly there was a flash of lightning and a roar of thunder and strong wind blew the letter out of his hand. That almost looks like alcohol ink in the back. Peter chased the letter. He tried to stop it with his foot, but it blew away. Then it flew high into the air and landed skipping across a hopscotch game. 
The letter blew this way and that. Peter chased it this way and that. He couldn't catch it. Big drops of rain began to fall. And just then, someone turned the corner. It was Amy. Oops, hold it, my, it froze again on you guys. I just saw that. Okay. And back, there we go. Okay, we have that there. So this is the one I said it looked like alcohol ink. Peter thought, what will the boys say when they see a girl at my party? Suddenly there was a flash of lightning and a roar of thunder. A strong wind blew the letter out of his hand. Peter chased the letter. He tried to stop it with his foot, but it blew away. Then it flew high into the air and landed skipping across a hopscotch game. And the letter blew this way and that, and Peter chased it this way and that. He couldn't catch it. Big drops of rain began to fall, and just then someone turned the corner. It was Amy. She waved to him. The letter flew right toward her. She mustn't see it, or the surprise will be spoiled. They both ran for the letter. In his great hurry, Peter bumped into Amy. He caught the letter before she could see it was for her. Quickly, he stuffed the letter into the mailbox. He looked for Amy, but she had run off crying. Now she'll never come to my party, thought Peter. He saw his reflection in the street. It looked all mixed up. When Peter got back to his house, his mother asked, Did you mail your letter? Yes, he said sadly. Saturday came at last. Everybody arrived but Amy. Shall I bring the cake out now, his mother asked Peter. Let's wait a little, said Peter. No, bring it out now, chanted the boys. All right, said Peter slowly. Bring it out now. And just then the door opened and in walked Amy with her parrot. A girl, ugh, said Eddie. Happy birthday, Peter, said Amy. Happy, happy, happy birthday, Peter, replied, repeated the parrot. <laughs> Peter's mother brought in the cake she had baked and lit the candles. Everyone sang. Make a wish, cried Amy. Wish for a truck full of ice cream, shouted Eddie. A store full of candy and no stomach ache. But Peter made his own wish and blew out all the candles at once. And that was it. It was always a fun one to read to the kids and have them think about what Peter wished for. And that book came out in 1968. So, so many of them. They're so much fun. Um, we're doing fun. Let's see if, there we go, I'm back in. Oh, my check. Peter, Peter, uh, spank that thumb. Oh, thanks, Deidre. Spank the thumb. Wiener, Willy, tomato, tomato. Uh, is it okay to drink with a Z? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> it probably has that effect, Angie. It's probably uh, um, adding a little bit of uh, intensity to it, just let's say. Lurking, there's Donna. Hi, Donna. Long day. Hope everyone's doing well. Yes, Donna's lurking. Long day, yes. It decreases the effect. Okay. <sighs> now, I think she means that it decreases the effect of the Z patch not decreases the effect of the alcohol. Just saying, could be. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, Julia. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys are so funny. Yeah. All right. So those were two of the stories that he did about Peter. And there is just, oh, I've got time for one little, if I have it. Where's... That's a poem for Peter. That's not it. Do I have Peter's chair on my loans shelf? There it is. This is the one where Peter... I thought it was. On my shelf. Peter's chair. There we go. Okay, so this is the one where Peter um, has a new sister and a new baby kid. I don't know what that, I, you know, I was the youngest, so I was the spoiled one, but I have watched it with my grandkids, what happens when the new one comes along. And this is another book that he used, Ezra Jack Keats used a whole lot of wonderful um, collage in. So I was just a little bit up and it froze up again and we're going to go back. I keep having to unplug and do something. I must not like that cord. We'll see. I'll watch it carefully. So this is Peter's chair. They're all pretty short, so. And there's Willie. Peter stretched as high as he could. There, his tall building was finished. Crash! It came down. Oh, shh, called his mother. You'll have to play more quietly. Remember, we have a new baby in the house. Peter looked into his sister Susie's room. His mother was fussing around the cradle. That's my cradle, he thought. And they painted it pink. Hi, Peter, said his father. Would you like to help me paint sister's high chair? It's my high chair, whispered Peter. He saw his crib and muttered, My crib, it's painted pink too. And not far away stood his old chair. They didn't paint that yet, Peter shouted. He picked it up and ran to his room. Let's run away, Willie, he said. And Peter filled his shopping bag with cookies and dog biscuits. We'll take my blue chair, my toy crocodile, and the picture of me when I was a baby. Willie got his bone. And they went outside and stood in front of his house. This is a good place, said Peter. He arranged his things very nicely and decided to sit in his chair for a while. but he couldn't fit in his chair. Whoopsie. I lost it again, you guys. Oh. There. Let's try a different cord. Well, maybe not. Maybe so. Let's try a different cord. Ah, sounds better. Okay, back there where, would you like to help me paint your sister's chair? It's my high chair, said, whispered Peter. So the, he saw his crib. Sorry, I have to repeat, but I realized I hadn't turned the pages. He saw his crib and muttered, my crib, it's painted pink too. Not far away stood his old chair and they didn't paint that yet, Peter shouted. He picked it up and ran to his room. Let's run away, Willie, he said. And he filled the shopping bag with cookies and dog biscuits. We'll take my blue chair and my toy crocodile and the picture of me when I was a baby. And Willie got his bone. They went outside and stood in front of his house. This is a good place, said Peter. He arranged his things very nicely and decided to sit in his chair for a while. But he couldn't fit in the chair. It was too big. His mother came to the window and called, Won't you come back to us, Peter dear? We have something very special for lunch. Peter and Willie made believe they didn't hear, but Peter got an idea. Soon his mother saw signs that Peter was home. 
the rascal is hiding behind the curtain, she said happily. She moved the curtain away, but he wasn't there. Here I am, shouted Peter. <laughs> Peter sat in a grown-up chair. His father sat next to him. Daddy, said Peter, let's paint the little pink little chair pink for Susie. Look at Susie's hand sticking out on the doily in the over here. Mom's holding her. Just her little hand. And they did. Oh, Willie walked through the pink paint. And that one. And that one came out in 1967. Okay. Well, I'm not going to risk this much longer because I'm pushing the limits of whatever it is that's freezing things up. I apologize for that, you guys. <laughs> um, Death Valley Rocks. Yes. The last day for students. Of two weeks to wrap up, then a six-week break. Woo -hoo. Donna, are you guys um, on year-round schools where you are? And Donna, aren't you... Is Donna, are you in Arizona too? Remind me. I have to, I'd have to look it up. I can't remember. Um, any type of, oh yeah, any type of materials. You don't have material, material, any type of materials will work. You can do any kind of things. And sometimes even collaging is, is like taking, um, and like taking different kind of paints. Like you might have tube paints and adding things to them and making them goopy and gloppy and doing stuff with that. Um, wackadoo, wackadoo, wackadoo. Enjoy your time off. You deserve it. Yay. You bet. I'm, I'm interested in, to know, Donna, if, if that's where you are, because I want to know the schedule for my daughter, my grandkids, when they're going to be on if, what kind of school system they're going to schedule they're going to be on. On um, fairy doors, I want to see how you do. Oh, yes. We made it. Yay. Okay. A <laughs> nice hat. Okay. We haven't done fairy doors yet. Oh, I'm glad you like these books. I'm there. Ezra Jack Keats has so many to choose from and, um, they're just goggles is one that I haven't seen. And, oh, oh, okay. So Bob sent me an interview they did with, on NPR with Judith Vorst, 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 which who is, it's the, um, 50th anniversary of Alexander and the Horrible, Terrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, which I'm going to have to read because I, I love that book. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, but they did a, she, and she, uh, she was 91. She is 91 and NPR did a, uh, they have a book of the day, um, podcast, and they interviewed her for that. So I'm excited to listen to the interview, find out more about it. And I've always loved Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. And I'll read that one. Who knows when. So anyway, you guys, um, this has been episode 197 of Story and Art, Keeping It Real. And I'm just stunned that you guys are hanging out with me still on this, even when my things freeze and you put up with me back and forth, um, and we, we get through them all. Um, Hey, Gloria. Hi. Nice to have you here. Um, I, I just rambled on Gloria. Don't worry about being late. Cause you know me, I'll ramble on, but, um, I'm going to, so if you have anything that you want me to share, try to send it to me. Um, in the email by midday tomorrow so that I can get it together. Uh, grandkids are going to show up and I should have it, it. Well, hold it. 
Lachlan's swimming's at five to six. Six. Yeah, I'll probably be doing the show just about the time that they arrive. So I might not, you know what? I might have to wait till Saturday to show art stuff. Saturday night. Yeah, I'll wait till Saturday night. Never mind. To show art stuff because I'll have to kind of shrink down tomorrow night's show just a little bit because grandkids are arriving and uh, Annalena and Philip are here going to come and tell us all about where they're going and the move and all that stuff. So I'll um, be doing that. Anyway, so and in fact, would you guys mind if I did 6.15 tomorrow night rather than 6.30 my time? That's a little earlier. Um, I hope it won't run into any Angie's or anybody else. Put in the, in, in the chat. I'm just mooking, working my way down. If it's okay if I do 6.15 a little earlier. That way I can make sure I'm done before they get here. And... Um, all of that for just tomorrow night. <laughs> Willie goes, I, that's what I love about Ezra Jack Keats books is that it, he doesn't make a really purposeful connection between one thing and the next thing all the time of what Willie's doing or what Peter's doing or what anything, because that's what kids do. They do that random kind of jump to here to there. And the story fits, um, all along with it. And Julia, the, the illustrations in these are done by Ezra Jack Keats. He, um, very well-known, famous, uh, author, illustrator. In fact, he's the founder of the Ezra Jack Keats, um, Children's Literature Award. It's given to books of distinction that, um, for that, that, um, promote, um, diversity. And, um, he passed away. I can't remember now when he passed away, but, um, there's an Ezra Jack Keats foundation and he just, you know, he's right up there with, um, the best of the best in children's literature. And so, yeah. Um, yep, exactly. So, okay, uh, but it, no drinking was, uh, got up. Oh, she planted her plants. Good for you. Okay. I'm just checking down here. Almost done under the chair and good night's sleep. Some of the districts, but not, not all some in the district. Okay. Thank you for the sweets. Good. Oh yeah. String is makes really good. Oh, you're in Southern California as a psych. You work four more weeks a year than teaching stuff. That's right. Sorry, not Arizona. I just, I couldn't, I, that's right. Southern California. They're going to, uh, it's going to be in Mesa and, um, yeah. Gail's in Arizona. I know that. Gail is. All right, you guys. Um, so I'm going to just assume that it's okay if I do 615. It's good for you. Good for you. I'm good with earlier. Good. Oh, good. I will be on the road, but have a Miracast capable servo. Oh, it's so cool. Lurking. That's good. All right. Thank you, you guys. Um, I, story time is at 630, Julia, every night. Uh, and when I do this, um, usually, but the grandkids are coming and they're moving and I'm kind of, and pro but Saturday night, probably Layla will be here and most likely we'll have a guest reader. She'll help me with it. Lachlan might even chip in. Maybe he'll draw something for us, but, um, so send your art. Um, Julia doesn't know this. Here is, by, if I can type. Uh, my, my laptop is too far away. I have things in the way. There we go. Um, images by Gretchen and I. Okay, to to send it artwork. To send art. Okay, okay. There you go. 
So if you want me to show something on Saturday night that you've done recently, send me a piece or two, then I can bring it into the story and, or bring it into the show and we can do feature you guys' stuff and, and then I'll have and uh, some things. And then probably um, I might do Alexander tomorrow night. It's not too long of a book. We'll see. We'll see what we're going to do. You just got to got to stick around. But thank you so much. I apologize for the freezing in and out. Not quite sure what the glitchy's done. It's, you know, I don't know if I didn't leave enough sparkle dust out for the technology fairies or who knows what. Or maybe my, oh, my Caldig is a little heated. I might think I have a little bit. I think I need to get another hub because I'm putting too many things through one hub and it's kind of like toasting out. <laughs> Who knows? All right, you guys, until next time, that's it for tonight. And I hope you enjoyed those stories. I did. I love Ezra Jack Keats. Do something collage -y. Do something. This is all that stuff that you don't have that, you, you know, that you have laying around things to do. Um, you can even do like old pieces of crayon and melt them down and use them for things. That's a whole other thing I'm thinking about doing too. We'll see what I do. Anyway, you guys, thanks for being here and listening in on the stories and for celebrating art and for looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. Keep it up and you'll find it first by go looking in the mirror and I'll see you next time. There I am. In the heat of the night, we could get lost in all the lies and sounds. Feel the right, we won't go home. We just stay here. Tamara, you sent me something I need to. I want to show. There's not just stars on the boulevard.